Ahoy sailors, this is your captain speaking. Welcome to another episode of Bruise News. Having a good day so far, keeping on schedule, doing our, you know, our thing that we do every two days where we come and we start talking about some mixed martial arts stuff, and we do the other video and we start talking about other stuff, some random stuff that usually revolves around video games, which it will be in the next episode. And uh, you can check that out and be uploaded around the same time that this one is. So I hope that you check both out. We're going to start off with a little bit of a banger. Here, a little bit of a banger. Uriah Faber, he's coming back. He's coming out of retirement. Uriah Faber's been doing um, grappling tournaments outside of mixed martial arts. Actually, they're, the grappling tournaments are getting bigger. You see a lot of people like Chael Sonnen and um, John Jones, Jake Shields, GSP even sometimes. Uh, competing in these grappling tournaments outside of the UFC where it's just, you know, submissions and wrestling, essentially. And they're pretty cool. They're competitive. There's good tournaments going on. Jake Shields does really well, actually, because he's a very, very good ground grappler, if I, if anybody understood that. But we're not talking about Jake Shields. We're talking about Uriah Faber. Uh, Uriah Faber is scheduled to face a fighter named Ricky Simon. Ricky Simon is a young guy. I think he's 27 years old. He's 15 and 1. I think he's like 2 and 0 or 3 and 0 in the UFC. So he has a he has, he's got a pretty polished record. He's coming over from the LFA, which is where Conor McGregor's from, where he was actually bantamweight champion. So the kid is definitely on his way up. He has a future in the UFC for sure. Fighting a guy like Uriah Faber, especially Uriah coming out of retirement. It's a big fight for both of these guys because Uriah is getting a big fight that is against a, guy, a kid who is really probably going to be a top competitor in the UFC bantamweight division, or maybe not. You know, it's just one of those things. Fighting can be tricky, and sometimes when you take that step up in competition, you don't know. But with how well he did in the LFA, just like guys like Conor McGregor did, you kind of you, you need to see that stepping stone to where... They're sitting, and as we know, Conor McGregor ended up doing very well in the UFC. Very, very well. He's the first person to move up and win a title. So, I mean, that says a lot. That says a lot about how good Conor is. Regardless if you enjoy him as a person, like myself or not, he is still a fantastic striker, and he's one of the best fighters that we've had, you know, in terms of versatility and his ability in the striking department. Moving on because I don't think there's anything really much going on else with that. Uh, Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero, something really interesting happened with him. So Yo Yoel Romero in 2016, he got hit right before his first fight with Robert Whitaker, or it was the fight against Bisbing. It was one of those two fights. Well, what happened was Yoel got hit for steroids, and you know, as it goes on, the internet completely slammed Yoel, saying that, you know, he's been using steroids his whole career. There's no way that a 40-year-old man can move and look as good as he does inside of the octagon, especially with no prior background of striking. The dude is actually, like, he defies, like, science and all that stuff. He's like a robot. Like, if I could compare one UFC fighter to a machine, it would be Yoel Romero. The guy just doesn't make any sense. He's had his controversy inside of the octagon with the Tim Kennedy thing. He's had his controversy in terms of the way that fights went or the, the, the outcome of fights. But I don't think that has anything to do with how well he's shown. I, I'll word that better. It has nothing to do with how well he's done in the UFC. The guy is fantastic. He's knocked out Weidman. He's come close to beating Whitaker on two different occasions. He's had trouble making weight, but again, he's a big buff guy for middleweight, and he looks like he was made in a factory. So, I mean, it, it's not crazy for him to have weight cut issues. So, going back to what I was saying, he was busted in 2016 for using uh, a steroid called... I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong. I'm looking at it right now. Ibutamorin? Ibutamorin? Uh, I'm not really sure. I didn't look up what sort of anabolic this thing is but he was hit for it it's a legal substance set up by usada and he was hit for it now yoel immediately was like i didn't take any banned substances i don't do that stuff i've never been about that stuff so you need to check what's going on i think that i took a tainted supplement 
So he sent the supplement in, and USADA found after investigation that he had taken a taken, uh, tainted supplement, and they found him not guilty of of taking the supplement on purpose, knowing that they had a tainted product or that he had knowingly taken this anabolic. Now, when that happens, even though he was found not guilty, you still receive a suspension because you're competing under, um, um, uh, you know, you, you were still competing with something in your system. So he still gets suspended because it is your responsibility to take the measure of knowing what you're putting in your body. But he didn't knowingly take that. It's sort of like that weird oops moment. But he, he, the, the punishment fit the crime. He didn't really commit a crime other than not knowing. But you still have to know. That's important. It's like sort of like when you're a kid and you're throwing a ball in a house and you break a lamp. It's like, yeah, it's an accident, but is it at the same time? You got to watch that stuff. Anyways, Yoel immediately after they found him not guilty, he took this company to court. Now, the company that he took to court is called Gold Star or Gold Stair Performance Products. Um, they're not really actually a big company at all. So I don't know why Yoel chose to go with that company. A lot of the times these companies go out to big people trying to sponsor them. So they're the ones that end up getting... Um, you know, more recognition. And Yoel has a really good, like I said earlier, he, he looks like he was made in a factory. Like somebody was like on create a character and they put everything together on him. Like the dude is chiseled. He's crazy looking. He's muscular in all the right places. That sounds kind of dirty <clears throat> when you say it like that. Ooh. Anyways, I have a girlfriend. <laughs> so Yoel, he took them to court. They ended up finding that this company was what had sent out more than one tainted supplement, and Yoel ended up winning that court case. And this court case came through today, this morning, when that happened. He was awarded $27 million, $27 million for having this tainted supplement. Now, the reason he was awarded so much money was because he was suing $3 million for, for, um, for loss of time. So basically meaning like he had to take six months off and... You know, he would have been paid a specific amount by the UFC if he was able to fight. He got, uh, he sued them for um, emotional damage, which, I mean, why not? I mean, if a company really did that to me, I think I would try to pull off emotional damage. They'd be like, that affected me. Taking steroids negatively affected me because it sucks. You know, so like, I think that I would feign, you know, uh, an emotional damage Thing. Not to say that I'm a piece of garbage either, but, you know, I, I think that I would go for that as well. If I was suing a big company for as much money as I was trying to get everything out of them, I think that I would do that too. And then also, um, he was suing them for reputation, essentially. He said, he said that he was suing them for his time lost, his emotional damage, and then that his reputation had been tarnished in the UFC, which makes a lot of sense. That That is something, like, even people on the internet, as soon as something happens, like John Jones and his picogram stuff, like, people jump on it. It's like, John, John Jones was cheating the entire time. It doesn't matter. You won't change my mind. You know, Anderson Silva gets hit for a, for a gas station dick pill. You know, and like, he's 42 years old and he wanted to have a good night with his girlfriend, or his wife, and he gets a gas station dick pill, and he, people jump on him for using steroids. It's like, no, he took a supplement that he shouldn't have taken and had things that weren't supposed to be there in it, but he wasn't taking enough that it would have enhanced his performance. You know, it's the difference between that. It's the difference between TJ Dillashaw taking straight anabolics, and then John Jones having a picogram, which is literally putting a piece of sand and into a swimming pool, an Olympic size swimming pool. That's how much John Jones has had in his system. And that was from a tainted supplement that will be in his system for the next seven to ten years. So again, that makes that makes sense that that happened. So when a company is found to be fraudulent, which is what ended up happening, so it wasn't just that the company had made a tainted product, they were actually putting this this supplement or enhancing drug into their product without putting it on the disclaimer or the ingredients list. So it's not the same as like, say, if you like go and get like a packet of gummies from the store, like gummy bears. It's like the gummy bears have all the listed ingredients. Well, it's like there's stuff that they don't necessarily list on that, but it doesn't really matter because they're not giving you anything that would be deemed illegal or deemed notable in any way. So when it's something that is 
or should require a warning and it's not placed on there, that's when it becomes fraudulent. And when it's fraudulent in the state of New Jersey, which this happened, apparently the Fraudulent Act in New Jersey makes it so that the um, that the that the consumer it's called the Consumer Fraud Act in New Jersey. Okay, sorry, my words got all jumbled there. It's called the Consumer Act. Fraudulent Consumer Act in New Jersey and basically that means that if a consumer has placed a fraudulent product or put something in there that wasn't supposed to be that needed a label the amount triples which I don't understand like why that is necessarily but hey that's New Jersey for you it worked out for UL so he sued them for essentially nine million dollars that amount was tripled so 27 million dollars now Gold Stair isn't a gigantic company, so they're going to end up probably not able to pay that amount. So the insurance will have to pay out the rest of what they owe to Yoel, depending on if the company is insured for enough money to do that in the first place. If they're not, the main heads of the company will have to go to the government and they'll have to take that out. But Yoel will be awarded the $27 million offhand, but directly the initial payment always comes from the company itself. So who knows if they're going to end up being able to pay him $12 million and the government will have to pay him the rest of the 15 and then they can get the 15 from the company themselves at a later date. I don't really know the specifics of that, but as of right now, Yoel has won a gigantic court case for $27 million, and he probably at this point does not need to fight again even if he wanted to, but I'm sure that he does because the dude is a competitor. Anyways, I hope that everybody had a great day. I hope that everybody enjoyed this video. We got to start getting these videos up better with more likes, more subscribes, more shares. My last one didn't do so great, but we're working on it. We got to kind of try to stem out of my friends here. My friends just watching my videos, and we have to start getting other people to watch these videos because it's really important to me, and I... I really important to you, I hope. Anyways, thanks everyone, and make sure you have a great night.